Here I want to showcase to you how complex you can get your iterating functions to be. Now, if you're not still not familiar with what an iterating function is, an iterating function in, in the DAX formula language is uh, generally going to be, have something that starts with an X on the end. Um, you could also have table functions which iterate through uh, through a table, like filter or values. But in this case, we're going to we're going to deal with sum X. So if you look at uh, this formula here for total sales, this is an iterating function because it's sum X, right? And so what uh, what it's saying here or what it's doing is for every uh, and iterating means it, it iterates through every single row to go and do a calculation. For every single row in the sales table, we are timesing, we are multiplying the quantity by the current price. And we're going and reaching back into the product table using this related function to go and get that current price. And so I want to show you how you can actually write really, really complex iterating functions which extract really cool insight that you might want to get in your data. So what I'm going to do, what I want to do is I want to calculate, I want to calculate here. I want to see how many of how many sales we make above a certain price. Uh, in this case, I'm going to I'm going to select two thousand dollars. I'm going to say I want to calculate what are our sales per month for for products above two thousand dollars, but someone buys more than just one product. So they actually buy multiple products over $2,000. And I want to see, well, how does that compare to our total sales? So that's the sort of complexity we can get to. And we can actually write this with one formula. And we can do it with an iterating function, an iterating formula. So if I just go and recreate this, I'm going to call this sales greater than $2,000, uh, price of $2,000. Um, so, so it's going to be a long title here. So I'm going to go sale price Actually, I'm going to go sale price greater than 2,000 and quantity quantity greater than one. So this is quite price, uh, quite complex, right? Um, you would think generally you'd have to write a few different um, you know, columns or a few different measures to get the answer here, but I'm going to show you you can actually do it in one. So I'm going to go equals. And then I'm going to jump down to another line. I'm going to start with sum x. Now we're going to look at what we first need to enter in here. It says we need to enter a table here, right? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tackle this quantity greater than one challenge right here in this table. So I'm actually going to create a table which is not the entire sales table, but actually a table which has already filtered out anything that only sold once. So I'm going to go filter in here because filter is a table function, right? So you can put any sort of table inside where it asks you for a table. So you can put tables inside of tables, just like um, just like I'm doing now. So I'm going to go filter, uh, and then I'm going to go sales. And now I'm going to iterate through every single row in the sales table within this filter function. And, and I'm going to say filter out, filter out will, will only, only show me or only retain Quant where, where the quantity, each row where the quantity is greater than one. And so that actually gets rid of any sale that was one. And that uh, allows me to, I guess, cross off this one and say, okay, I've achieved uh, this part of the function now. But now what I want to do is I want to, for every single one of those sales, which is above one, so two and above, I want to then create some additional logic. And this additional logic, uh, I'm going to write in the expression part, and I'm going to use switch here. I'm going to switch true. And then I'm going to jump down to another row again. And then I'm going to say, well, if the sale is has a current price of greater than or equal to 2,000, then I want to calculate the total sales. And if it's not, then I don't want to calculate it at all. And uh, then to do that, all I need to put here as an alternative result is zero. And then I'm just going to round that off like so. And then here, here you can see, well, we've, uh, this is how you write some quite complex iterating formulas. So uh, the key part is just understanding what sort of tables you can put in there and then what the actual iteration is doing. And in this case, for every single row in this filtered down table, I'm evaluating, well, is the current price greater than 2000, which is what I wanted to um, extract. And if it is, then we actually count up that row. We count up the sales of that row. And if it's not, then it's just zero. And then I just push enter. 
and then now if I drag this into the table, you'll see that we'll be get, we get results. Um, we'll be, we are getting results very similar to what we achieved here. But the only difference is this is on a daily basis. Now we can uh, very quickly uh, you know, create some additional insight here because we could actually reuse this pattern, right? Say for instance, we wanted to uh, look at what was uh, above. Let's have a look at what was above, say 500. And then all you'd have to do is do a small change here. Enter. And then drag this into the table as well. And we can see that that is a big difference. It's obviously more because we've got more, more products that we're actually counting up because we're not actually uh, getting rid of as many um, high, uh, higher price or lower price products as we, as we were with the 2000. And then we could obviously maybe change this into a visualization probably a little bit busy to be honest so it's probably worthy to remain in a table or we might want to actually uh, make the time frame um, a bit more condensed like we have on the left hand side here hopefully you, you can maybe evaluate this function and then just under, I guess the thing I wanted to get across here was the understanding of of how far you can take these iterating functions you can start to really dive into any aspect of your data or extract very specific insights into your data and the way you do it is at this uh, using this row context that you actually get inside of these iterating functions uh, because you can go and look at an individual row and analyze something in that row and put it in or out inside your calculation and doing it inside these um, iterating functions sum x average x uh, count x etc etc that's how you do it